Welcome back. In this session, I want to teach you a bit about lines in ArcGIS. So start, make an Excel spreadsheet and fill in um, a column for line ID. And we'll have four vertices that are going to create line one and four vertices that are going to create line number two. So we can label these vertices, vertices 0 through 3 and 0 through 3, and then simply have an X and Y column. So in this case, my first line will start at 0, X, 0, Y, and it will end at 10, 10. And my second line will start at an X of 0, a Y of 5, and it will end at 10, 10. So make an Excel spreadsheet like this spreadsheet, and then we'll use ArcGIS to create a point layer from this Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so here's our Excel spreadsheet in ArcMap, and then we simply use the tool Make XY Event to create points as a layer that's a point event layer from the X and Y field. Okay, and once again, this layer will be a virtual layer. It won't be a permanent layer. So then we could just create this virtual layer from our X field and our Y field from the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and then we'll symbolize our virtual layer to see, indeed, we have two different line IDs in these points. So under symbology, you can select categories and symbolize based on line ID and then add all the different values of line ID. So we do have IDs of one and two. So the green points are from line ID two and the red points are from line ID one. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is connect the dots or basically create lines by going from point to point to point. And to do that, we're going to use a tool. So the tool is called Points to Layer. And if we hit OK, we get an error message. So it says table must have object IDs in order to be sorted. So basically, this was a virtual point layer and what we really need is a point feature class stored on the hard drive. So to solve that problem we'll use the copy features tool and take this virtual layer and store it on the hard drive as a point feature class. So the output from the copy features tool creates a point feature class and it's stored in this folder test so now we can run the tool that connects the dots to create lines. Okay, so we run the tool points to line and we say use that field anytime it finds a new line ID that will create a new different line. And then we are not going to close the line. The ending vertices is not going to be exactly the same as the beginning vertices. And then OK. And then basically that tool created lines by connecting the points. And we could symbolize those by the line ID value. So if we go to properties and symbology, under category, line ID, add all values. And OK. So then you see that ID 1 was symbolized as a red marker. Let's just make it a bigger red marker. And it did indeed connect the dots to create a line with ID, line ID number one. Okay, and if we look at the attribute table, the shape is polyline for these two features. So a line has length, but it has no width property. So we could calculate geometry and get the length of each line. So we'll add a double precision field. And then right mouse click on that field and calculate geometry. So here the coordinate system's unknown, so it's simply going to use the XY coordinates to calculate the length of every line in whatever units the XY coordinates are in. So this first line is a longer line and it's a length of 17.07, .07, and our second line is shorter, it's a length of 13.38. Okay, so what I'm going to do is copy 
one layer, so I've got two layers, and I'll use a definition query. So this first layer will just have a definition query of line ID equals one. This second layer will have a definition query line ID equals two. Okay, so after I complete my definition queries, here's the first layer, line one, and here's the second layer, line two. Okay, so it's important to note that lines have length, but they do not have width. So because of that, sometimes if you run a geoprocessing tool, it won't give you what you expect. So for example, let's run the intersect geoprocessing tool. So where do these two lines intersect? Okay, so we're going to run the intersect tool, find where line one intersects line two, and output that to this shape file called intersect output dot shape, and then OK. And if we look in the geoprocessing results window, we get a warning, warning empty output. So basically it created a shape file that has no intersection. So if we look at the table of this, there's nothing in the table. Okay, so the reason why we get no intersecting lines is because by definition, lines have no width. So the only time you would find intersecting lines would be if two lines are exactly on top of each other. And in this case, there are no two lines exactly on top of each other. Okay, so I go back to my results window and double click on intersect. And this time what I'll do is I'll say, well, our output will be output number two. And our output type, rather than being the input, which is a line, will make it point. So point is a location. So this will find all the locations where the two lines intersect. So indeed, it does find the two locations where the lines intersect. So that's just one example where you have to realize that line by definition has no width, it only has length. Okay, if you want to, you can split a line into many lines basically by using the tool split line at vertices. So here, for example, line one is just one continuous polyline. So we'll select line one and the output will be, we'll just call it split lines and then OK. So the result is this line at one time was a continuous line. Now it has three lines. So there's the first line, the second line and the third line. Okay, another way you can split lines is using some point layer. So basically this is identifying the locations where you want to split lines. So what I did was I took our original points and just did a definition query for feature ID equals two. And there's one point that had a feature ID equals two. So then we could run the split line at point tool. So basically for every point in this layer, it'll split the lines. And in this case, we'll output and call it split line dot shape. So basically it does split the line into this first line and then our second line split there. Okay, so there's tools that allow you to cut up lines. There's also a tool that will allow you to merge together lines. Okay, so for example, we can use the tool unsplit line to basically merge together our lines and we just have to pick what field that we're going to do the dissolving by. So if we put feature ID, feature IDs are different, so the lines would not be unsplit. However, if we say line ID, they're the same, so it will join together the lines or unsplit them. And then we've got a length of each line. This is actually the original length. So that's a problem with shape files is they are not updated automatically. So you have to manually update shape file. So I'll calculate geometry to manually update that shape file. So now we've got the length of each line. So then we could say we also want statistics. So for the length, give us the sum of the line lengths as those lines get merged together and then just OK. 
So the result is we do have one line. It has the ID that was used for the dissolving, and it has a field, what's the sum from the original two lines. So we could right mouse click calculate geometry to double check, and it is the length of that line. Okay, one property of lines is the direction of the line. To tell what the direction of the line is, you could symbolize it arrow at end. So this particular line is going in this direction. And occasionally you want to change the direction of line. So for example, you might want the line flowing downstream and downstream direction is this way. So to do that, what you would do is just select the lines you want to change and then run the flip line geoprocessing tool. So that will work on all the selected lines. So now if we go clear selection, we've got it flowing or downstream. So flip line allows you to basically change the directions of all the selected lines. Okay, we could also add vertices along lines using the densify tool. So in this case, we're going to add a vertex every one, and we don't know what the um, units are, so we'll set it to unknown, and then OK. So that puts every distance of one along the line, there should be a vertex. And to see that, we'll run the feature vertices tool. So feature vertices to points and extract all the points and put those points in this new shapefile called densified one. So every distance of one, there should be a, a point along this line and then just OK. And it does show that every distance of one, now there's a point along that line. And we could check it using the measure tool, a densified line that it has these vertices along the line and the distance between vertices is a distance of one. Okay, so that's enough about lines. In the next video session, I'll teach you about polygons in ArcGIS.